Okay, so let's have a shot at creating a graph and getting a, a slope from the graph that we can use to work out k. So for this one, we're going to need a graph of the irradiance against the one divided by the square of the distance. So a little bit more work to be done, but not much. Uh, so I'll just take the values here of d squared and paste them, paste the values into the column underneath. And then I'll work out one divided by d squared in there, one divided by d squared. Now I could take the uncertainties um, and I could use those to produce error bars um, and you can get Excel to do that for you. I think you have to be in the desktop edition to do that, which I'm, I'm not at the moment. So. Also, to keep the video a little bit shorter, I'm just going to take the irradiances and paste in the values. Get Excel to work out the rest of the reciprocal square distances. And I should be able to plot a graph using these two quantities here. Insert, scatter, and there we go, there's my scatter graph. It's reasonably linear. Uh, you can have a quick shot with one with a best fit line. Well, so it's put a curve in there where I might have preferred a best fit line. So we'll just go back to the plane scatter graph and worry about adding a best fit line later on. So to look at the graph, then it would need to have a vertical axis and corresponding units. It also should have major and minor grid lines on both axes, which it's only got major grid lines just now. And also for the SQA purposes, the blobs, these blue blobs for the data points are no use, they're not precise enough. So you need to change those to crosses. Um, then I want to add a best fit line and then get Excel, I can use the line est function to work out the uncertainty and the gradient of that line. And that would give me my K value plus a corresponding uncertainty using all the data. I need to be on the desktop edition to do that, and this is the web version. So you can read the notes anyway on how to get the uh, uncertainty from a gradient.